Okay, for B, doing the same thing again, finding the uh, intercepts and symmetry. So we do the same process we did for A. So first, we'll start with the intercepts. If you want to find the x-intercept, you want to put in a zero for y. So we have x cubed plus zero cubed equals nine x. And then we get x cubed equals nine x. Now, next thing you want to do, make sure you don't make a common mistake that I see a lot of students making on this. You do not want to divide both sides by x. If you do, you're not going to get one of your answers. The correct way of doing this would be to subtract it and set it equal to zero. So this is the correct way. If you divide both sides by x, you're not going to get all the answers. Uh, and it's mathematically not correct either because by dividing by an x, it's possible you might be dividing by zero, which is undefined. So therefore, uh, this is the way you want to do that. You want to factor out an x. Since it's a common factor for both of those, you get x squared minus 9. But then that's a difference of squares that you can factor one more time. And you get x plus 3, x minus 3. And then when you set that equal to 0, we actually get three answers. We get 0, negative 3, and 3 by setting all those individually equal to 0. So that would be your answer for x intercepts. We get three answers this time. So we get uh, 0, negative 3, and positive 3. Next, we want to find the y-intercept. So the y-intercept is where you put in a 0 for x and we're going to solve. So 0 cubed plus y cubed equals 9 times 0. Uh, then this is going to give you y cubed equals 0. If you take the cube root of both sides, uh, then you get 0. And that would be your single answer for y-intercept would just be 1, would be 0. So now we got these complete, we're going to move on to the symmetry. Now before I erase this, I just want to uh, remind you that for these kind of problems, you need to label your work. Now you don't have to necessarily put y equals 0 or x equals 0 next to it, but at least put x-intercept and y-intercept down so that way I can follow your work. Because if I see a bunch of scribble all over the place and I can't make out what you're trying to do, then I may take points off. So again, you need to make it organized like this so I can look at your work and I can see what work goes with which part of the problem. Because again, it's not, not just about the answers here. I do take a look and the work has to be uh, correct besides the answers being correct there. So one thing to keep in mind uh, as you're working through these. So the next thing you want to do is do symmetry. So again, when you do symmetry, make sure you label what parts you're doing when you do the work. So first, we want to look for x-axis symmetry. And this is where you put in a negative y for y. So if we do that, we'll put that into the original one. You're going to simplify it after you put negative y in for the y. And if you get exactly the same thing you started with, then it has that symmetry. Uh, so we'll do that. x cubed plus negative y cubed equals 9x. And then what happens here is because there's a negative inside and you're raising it to a cube, that negative is going to come out. So you get x cubed minus y cubed equals 9x. Now that's not the same as the original one, and there's nothing I can do to make it look like the original one. If I multiply by a negative, that'll make that positive, then everything else is going to be negative. So this one, uh, we can go ahead and put no. It's not going to have that kind of symmetry. So next, let's move on to y-axis. Okay, so y-axis symmetry, we're going to put in a negative x for x. So negative x for x we'll put into the original one. So negative x cubed plus y cubed equals 9 times negative x. And then we're going to simplify this. Negative x cubed, so again, because we have a negative raised to an odd power, the negative is going to come out there. And then this is negative over on this side. Now I could multiply this one through by a negative, and that will get rid of the negatives here. However, the middle is going to turn negative again, and I get the same thing I had up here. So this is another one that I'm going to say, uh, no, does not have that kind of symmetry. Now the last one I'll do over here. So we want to find the origin symmetry, and that's negative x for x, and you're going to put in a negative y for y. So you have to do 
uh, both of them for the origin. So if we do that here, we get negative x cubed, negative y cubed equals negative 9x. Both of these, because you have a negative raised to an odd power, negatives are going to come out for each of those. And we get this. Uh, this is still negative here. Now, we want to clear out all those negatives, so we're going to multiply the whole thing, both sides, by a negative 1. So we'll do that. And by doing so, it's actually going to change all these into a positive on this side. So even that one, all of them will turn positive, and we notice that we get exactly the same thing as the original one. So because of that, we're going to say, yes, it does have the symmetry. Uh, so what I would put down here would be origin symmetry. So we have, uh, again, when you, when you do your work, kind of label them like this. Again, you don't have to put negative y for y or negative x for x. That's just for me to show you what we're doing. Otherwise, at least just label it x-axis, y-axis, and put your work underneath so that way I can follow it uh, so I can give you the full credit for that one.